sitting down today with Mr. Dwayne Bryan. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Doing good? I am. I mean, you've been t- telling us about the crazy, crazy week, crazy day that you've had. I mean, so what's it been like being able to come out here and do, do some hosting for J- Jamming at the Weed today? It's an honor, honestly. Um, it's uh, I was here for the first year they did it, and uh, some of the same artists have come back tonight, which is a, which is beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I just I have moments up there on that stage thinking about the first year we did this. Yeah. I uh, got asked to help him see it because the original person had a family thing come up and came out. We ironed out a few details, and and uh, one of the young men that uh, was here that year just finished. Uh, Selling out the Canes last night and was at the Opry about a month ago. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's uh, raising the roof in uh, Newkirk, Oklahoma tonight. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, that's one of the things to me is like, I think a lot of people, you know, there's a there's a good amount of people out here, but, you know, there always needs to be more, you know. Yeah. And I think a, a lot of people don't give smaller local artists enough of a chance. You know, they wait till they're bigger or whatever it is to go out and see them. Um, so, I mean, what would you say to those people that, at home right now that trying to get them to come out and, and check these guys out take advantage of every backyard acoustic session you hear about get out to tumbleweed they're doing this kind of stuff all the time mercury lounge in tulsa um, farley's in claremore these are just a few places i'm familiar with there's so many places around right now um uh, there's uh reds in tulsa mm-hmm. You know, here in Stillwater is Salty Bronx. They're just, they're just, you never know who's going to show up. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's the beauty of all this. And then these young men and women that are playing right now, where are they going to be next year, year after? Right. You know, and uh, people will be complaining about the ticket prices. <laughs> when they can come <laughs> yeah, here tonight, exactly. what was it, 10 bucks? Yeah. For yeah. 24 artists? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. P- it, p- people don't realize it's like, it's like, they, they they go to a show like like Wyatt Flores is playing right now or something, right. and they'll be complaining like, oh, I had to pay yep. X amount of dollars to see Wyatt. I'm like, you could have saw him last year at uh, Jamming at the Weed or the Tumbleweed for yeah. twenty five dollars or whatever, yeah, or, or even to, less, or yeah. even less to, yeah. to see the same guy, and you you could see him develop and yeah. and it's even I. I think it's weird as like a viewer to say, but even a little bit more rewarding to watch a guy that's went from a smaller venue like this to go play at the Grand Ole Opry. Or uh, fills your heart. Yeah, yeah. Fills your heart. Um, these boys are on stage right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. Grant Wright, Charlie Hick, Charlie Hickman, Zach Wenzel, and Chris Matthews. Mm-hmm. You know, I can tell you that all those boys play from their hearts. Yeah. And. Uh, them coming up here and hop on this stage with just nothing but their guitar and their microphone tonight. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I think that's one thing that I think we we really love about having a platform like this yeah. to, to talk to artists is to see where they come from and see like how they how they write their songs, where they're coming from when they, they sing their music and really kind of get the like really behind the scenes look at them. Like, like we've had Charlie on like two or three times. Yeah, he know? was one of our first yeah. guys. He was yeah. one of our first guys and I, I, I'm friends with Charlie. I, I, I go to church, church with him sometimes and I, yeah. I really love like his music and the way he like expresses his voice and just the power that he puts behind <laughs> it and his songwriting yeah. all in one. And I think it's really cool to get to get to watch these artists go from a stage like this to like the BOK or like the Grand Ole Opry and like these big stages. I yeah. think it's really exciting to watch. How about Mile High Stadium? <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. Mile High Stadium, uh, United Center in Chicago. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, kind of wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. that's we talk about this all the time, but like, you see these older calf fry lineups and you look at the people that are playing on those yeah and the people that are playing lower on the list they're now headlining and the people that were headlining they're so big they're doing these like you said stadiums or whatever it may be you know so it's like i think that's something tumbleweed does a great job at is finding those artists that have that great potential you know and they they play here one year and they play here the next year and the next year they're headlining you yeah know? and i think they do a great job at that yeah yeah one of the things about uh <laughs> Those boys are having fun. <laughs> they, uh, tumbleweed is is 
it's complex, but it's still a handshake. You know, the, the men and women that agree to come play on that main stage at Calf Fry, the handshake is more important than the paycheck. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get good music here. Yeah. Um, I mean, it costs money to bring the buses and the semis and the, the even the vans, you know, yeah. and the trailers. It costs money. It costs this place money to keep the lights on and uh, provide a, 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 a platform for us to come out and enjoy music. But um, the still still a handshake place yeah and that's the music you get to hear here yeah do you remember yeah. your first tumbleweed experience like the first time you ever came here or heard of it or anything like that yeah it was 1992 really yeah do you remember who you came out to see i didn't come out to see anybody to tell you the truth okay really? i just heard about it i lived here then okay really? and uh I used to have a, a thing here i think it was i lived in glencoe actually and we'd come to town for, I think it was Joe's weekend or something. The whole damn town would be shut down and all the blocks would be just jam-packed with people. And and uh, and that kind of died out. And and I don't know what all happened between then and now. But I know for the last, oh, four or five years, I've been coming out here and just fell in love with the place. <laughs> so I hear a lot of stories around town about, you know, I used to come out here and it was all this... I don't know what fell. Well, that, that bar stool fell. That was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better talk nice about this place. Carrie's uh, always watching somewhere around here. Yeah, he is. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the when I lived here, the Salty Bronx was still alive and kicking. Mm -hmm. uh, college students and maybe a recruiter or two would go to the plasma center and donate plasma. It's still there. Yeah. Yeah. You can get your money and. <laughs> At Penny Beer Night at the, at the Wormy Dog. <laughs> you know, peanut shells on the floor and everybody spit tobacco on it. And it's kind of disgusting if you think about it. But, <laughs> but yeah, go donate plasma and get rid of some fluids out of your body, then replenish them with a lot of beer at Penny Beer Night. <laughs> Stupidest thing I've ever seen. A lot of people with college degrees right now have been to Penny Beer Night. <laughs> so, Wormy Dog is gone, but the spirit is still on the strip. Yeah. Down the street, um, Salty Bronx. Now, outlaws. You know, people see an old guy like me in there, and they're like, what's he doing here? <laughs> but uh, it's, it's interesting to go in there and watch. Yeah. You know, thousands of college kids line dancing to, is it called rap country or something? <laughs> I don't know. It's... <laughs> You've seen it, right? Yeah. I, I yeah. DJ here on college night. Yeah. And that's what they, they come up there like, this is a line dance play. And I'm like, yeah. are you sure that's a, oh, that's yeah. a line dance? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'll let you guys ask the question. I'll get to babbling. <laughs> so, we, we, we've been following you for a while. And we, we see, like, all the promotion that you get to do. Like, you put on those, like, backyard concerts yeah. and and like songwriters circle type things with these smaller artists so what is it like to get to like really experience like those kind of yeah. sessions like in your back backyard or at like a smaller venue like that and help facilitate in promoting the smaller artist in oklahoma it's an interesting question but there's not a simple answer um The, um, you know, I guess the elephant in the room here is the fact that it's my son that's playing the stadiums this year, okay? But before he came and played in the backyard, music was already in my heart. Mm -hmm. Now, that same year, a young man who's never played here, I met him through through family, through his family, and Facebook Messenger, Sam Barber. Mm. We all know Sam's played the Opry. Yeah. <laughs> we know he did a sold out tour in Australia. We know he's traveling around the country right now, playing shows everywhere, you know, kicking butt and taking names. Calf Fry this year. Uh, yeah. 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 So, um, Sam Barber, he'll be, he'll be, yeah, you're, that's right. Mm -hmm. Very excited about that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just because of the history. Um, I'm careful not to seem like I'm name dropping, you know? Yeah, yeah. But the truth is, just love the kid and to see him come back to Calf Fry. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, Wyatt, I mentioned it already. He was at the Opry a month ago. 
Canes last night, just still rocking and rolling, getting his feet planted. Um, J.R. Carroll, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we got to talk to – we had J.R. on here back – couple months ago and yeah he, i mean super talented yeah yeah super talented he is he's a good person y yes. yes yeah and uh tanner usry yes you know i've watched these guys headline the after party be on the main stage play the pony stage out here at the top of the berm you know <laughs> and uh had a had a story tonight um, i'll tell you the young man's name this is i i verified this so i can talk about him Happen to have a cheat sheet here with all the names. <laughs> Perfect. But I had him write down some notes for me. The hell, where's my front sheet at? There it is. First group that went up tonight was a guy on stage. You asked me about the small backyard type deals. Well, what I do up in Copan, and uh, you can edit this out and tell everybody later, but you can go on Facebook because that's what old people use. And uh, <laughs> it's called Copan Garage. Uh -huh. That's my page. And I'm very careful to just post stuff in there. If you're one of those people who doesn't use Facebook, well, you're missing out. So, um, interestingly enough, at J.R. Carroll's show at the Vanguard, the way this young man explained it to me, he said a, a bunch of half cowboy, half redneck people came up to me and they said, well, you, if you like to play and sing, if you like music, you ought to come up to Copan, Oklahoma. To uh, the Copan Garage. It's, it's how you find it on Facebook, you know. And uh, it's one of our events. Well, this young man came last year in March. Well, after we shut down the um, stage and we shut off the lights, and you know, we, we usually build a pretty big fire, a big fire pit, and we'll build a fire. Well, um, Hunter Bullock is here tonight. Yep. He, uh, Broke out his guitar around the fire. Well, I don't ever know who's there. Yeah. Um, some of the people that came to my camper down at Highway 30 Festival in Texas this year. Mind-blowing. The people that I found out were sitting there, Yeah. you know, playing, singing, and listening. So, but Hunter just played around the fire that night in March. Let's see, I'm a guy named Luke Christensen. I'm sorry, I should probably know more about him. But uh, down in Texas, I guess he won a pretty big music deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was at Copan that night. <laughs> well, he touched base with Hunter. And uh, as the story goes, Hunter quit his job now. And uh, not too long ago, he was opening for Casey Donahue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that seed was planted that night around that fire when I, I didn't know what happened. Yeah. I just found out tonight, uh, February this year about a seed that was planted in March of 2023. Hmm. So, I like to tell people nobody visits a seed garden. I'm not just saying that because we're doing this to be cliche. It's nobody cares about going out and looking at a bunch of dirt that might have seeds under it. Yeah. No, they want to see the flower. Yeah. That, that's a great, <laughs> that is great. So, awesome. we got a lot of flowers and music in Oklahoma. Yeah. But very few people want to talk about the, the nourishment and the water and the planting, you know. So to go back to your original question, that's what I try to do is plant seeds or create a good um, fertile foil f soil for the seed to grow in. And uh, I don't really know how to do that yet, but these stories keep popping up. So um, I'm going to keep doing that. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people get, they really complicate the shit out of music. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to go record in this fancy studio. <laughs> oh, I got to go do radio spots. Oh, I got to go do this. Oh, I got to go do that. You know, just play the music yeah. around the fire. Yeah. You never know who's listening. <clears throat> so I believe that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that, I hope that answered your question or observation yeah. about the. the uh, yeah, for sure. Small stuff. Yeah. I don't think there's any such thing as a small artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're already a big artist. They just don't have enough windows in the house open yet. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, we. Um, um, there's there's people that. 
I don't know. We watched. You guys were you here last night? Yeah. Yep. I wasn't. I was in Tulsa watching Wyatt. You know, Garrett Brown. He's my, my mom's neighbor in Copan. <laughs> really? Yeah. And uh, on more than one occasion, he's loaned me sound equipment for our deals downtown. You know? <laughs> um, Emily came over here. She didn't think she won. She's happy she did, but she was surprised. Yeah. So, But it's a blessing. And tonight, she's in Caney, Kansas, playing at uh, Mackey's. You know, yeah. Um, two weeks ago, I think, um, we had a sold-out show at uh, American Legion in Claremore. Huh. You know, it was beautiful. Yeah. So, just uh, again, how, what is that about, though? It's about planting seeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but then once you put them in the ground, you got to continue to work that garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, so. we we got a chance to talk to Emily yesterday. And yeah, she was she was awesome. Good. We 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 lo we love talking to her. And then we we had never uh, got a chance to like we had never heard of Garrett Brown. Yeah. And until we went and watched him last night, and we we watched him sound check yesterday. We're yeah. Like, like oh my gosh, this they're good. They work very hard on they're, what they do. Very. It, it very seems good. so easy for yeah. them. Yeah. They go up there and it's like wow, that was just yeah. Easy. Well, Garrett's been yeah. doing it a while. Yeah. You know, he's he's plays out of track five and different. You know what? Yeah casinos once you, you get in the front door of the casino you know you're you're doing your paperwork and you're you're doing it right and then yeah. you're going out there and singing good music yeah so yeah. i really like Eric's music i just want to yeah. tell you mm -hmm. i didn't know the other uh group that was here but yeah. i heard everybody did really well yeah, yeah. uh reagan <coughs> carter was the other guy yeah and uh we we started this other thing so we do this podcast and then we also have this thing called gcnhm sessions okay and so it's like we put out um like very unedited acoustic songs on spotify apple music that sort of thing and reagan was the first one we'd done that with yeah and um like the whole point of it is just to put out just raw music you know? yeah and so far that um that his songs came out yesterday but so far you know people are really liking that raw sound yeah. um and i think that's getting more popular you know a lot of the artists that come through here a lot of the artists tonight that's the kind of stuff they have out yeah and i think a lot of people you know kind of resonate with that you know, one of the things you can do on Spotify now, and and Apple too, you just go to the bottom, credits. Mm -hmm. You can see who wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. Who produced it? You know, and you open it up and it's got ten names for writing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Produced yeah. by three or four names. Yeah. Yeah. I I can't tell you how many times that I've been going to that those those credits and just yeah. looking at like because uh, i'm interested as a song listener to see right. who wrote this song who made it who made it happen and it's really interesting like, yeah. what you're saying like and sometimes it's like oh really yeah. or sometimes <laughs> like really I, yeah. I didn't know that that's really cool yeah, yeah. so that's, uh, i'm saying that because you're talking about the raw yeah, yeah. The rawness yeah now do you use spotify or apple music spotify mainly okay let's yeah. go <laughs> we have like this every time we have someone on we ask him because he's a Spotify guy and I'm an Apple music guy yeah. so we have to <laughs> I think they both have their perks it's kind of like you know Apple versus Android so yeah 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 so personal choice yeah. yeah for sure so who are you listening to like when you get in the car to go somewhere what are you throwing on the are you driving in silence or are you throwing on some music I listen to Evan Honer today okay and uh, Colt Ford a lot of old stuff uh-huh a lot of Tracy Lawrence Okay. Just like everyone else, Toby yeah. Keith the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, he, um, Ozzy, <laughs> Guns and Roses. Yeah. Um, Sinead O'Connor. You know, um, Inya. Okay. So, there you so go. There, there's a there's a pretty wide variety yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hey, he, he, you said Ozzy Osbourne and Guns N' Roses. He he grew up with a very like traditional, like old old country. Yeah. That's what he he grew up listening to. I grew up listening to like the classic rock, the the Motley Crue, yeah. the Guns N' Roses, yeah. the yeah. And I get to educate him very often <laughs> about uh, the, those type that, yeah. that type of music, and it's fun. <laughs> so well, I'm not one of those guys. I'm not a music lover. Like some people, they can sit and recite the band and their name and where they came from yeah. and the freaking size of the lug nuts on their bus. Because <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Just like this, you know, just like the Bible. I can't sit and recite all the verses in it. Yeah. But I can tell you, we got to sow a seed to get the fruit. So. Yeah. Um, 
So, um, interesting fun fact. Saw Guns N' Roses in 1989 in Tokyo, Japan. Wow. So for anybody who thinks that music is new to me. Wow. You know, That's cool. That's I cool. also went to the symphony in, or- in Yokosuka, Japan. Oh, wow. So yeah. saw Guns N' Roses in Tokyo. Saw the symphony in Yokosuka. Mm-hmm. You know, That's awesome. So, so uh, you come from a Navy background, if I'm not mistaken. Am yeah. I, am I, so what was it like being in the, in, in the Navy? Where, where were you stationed at? Yeah, obviously, J- Japan. but yeah. uh, Everywhere, in, literally. Er, everywhere. Yeah, Japan. And then uh, I like to say, uh, you know, East Coast, West Coast, South Coast, and No Coast. Because <laughs> I was stationed in the East yeah. Coast. I was stationed on the West Coast. Yeah. Stationed in Texas. And I was stationed in Oklahoma. Yeah. And wow. then Japan. Yeah. That's awesome. So, huh. yeah. Wow, that's wow. So, so how long? How long were you? How long did you do that? Just shy of twenty-four years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What 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 was your role in the in the Navy? I, I I'm not familiar with like how the the Navy works, but like what what was your role? What was your job in, in the Navy? Well, I started off cleaning the bathroom. I ended up as a master chief. Wow. But I worked in the boiler rooms and the engineering plant on the ships. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. What were there any? What what ships were you on? My first ship was the Midway, the USS Midway. Really? It's a museum in San Diego. Yeah, now. I've I've been there. Yeah. yeah. So your so your picture's on that wall somewhere there. Well, interesting fun fact. Um, I don't know if it's public or not, but they're getting ready to do an engineering birthing, um, like when you walk through and you have the audio thing uh-huh. on, and uh, you see pictures and stuff. I just I just donated fifty th- some pictures to the Midway Museum that will be used, and there'll be a letter that's in the spirit of what I told them. A letter would sound like writing home to your girlfriend or your wife, or whatever. Really? <laughs> and that's what people visiting Midway will see that letter. Oh, that's super that's cool. And those awesome. pictures, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so cool. cool. <laughs> so um, when I visited recently, uh, crazy man. When I walked on board on the quarter deck, it said. You know, welcome aboard, Master Chief Brian. I was like the guest on the marquee that day. Pretty wild. <laughs> so, a friend of mine is a, a docent on Midway. So, oh. he picked me up at the airport. We went to the ship. Got to go down to my old my old boiler room. Got to go to the dental department. And uh, he had a key, so we went behind the glass. And uh, my first, uh, my, my, my first uh, fake tooth, this is a fake tooth. <laughs> but the first one was a bridge you could take it in and out was made on Midway right there in that dental lab. <laughs> really? So, yeah. That's that's pretty cool. That, that, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Now now were the when you had that tooth did you did you lose that tooth or did you have that tooth pulled or No, nah, story's better. Okay. But I was in the second grade. My brother and I and my family went to see Jaws. <laughs> we came back home and he was in the top bunk and I was on the floor and he lowered the sinker down and I <laughs> put it in my mouth and he caught a fish and he yanked it and busted the side of my tooth off so over the years it just died uh, so when I joined the Navy they bleached it a couple of times and then finally it was just too far gone so they took it out and gave me that bridge huh. Huh. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's I had a I had a uh, distant cousin that was on the midway and so wow. we went out there and and we got to his picture was on the wall, and we got to tour that, and that was super. Have you ever been out there? No, no. It's super cool. Yeah, it's the most visited attraction in San Diego, California. Really? Wow. Yeah. Ho- hopefully, if I ever get to go to San Diego. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got to check I'll, that I'll, out. I'll yeah, that's that's out. cool. Yeah, that sounds yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was. It's weird to walk down through all the, the <coughs> stuff, and I mean, I can't imagine, you know, being in a. Yeah. Especially for 24 years. I can't imagine going down yeah. and... and well, I was on several like ships. Midway is my first one. Mm-hmm. I left there in 1990. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So, what, what what other sh- ships were you on? I was on a ship out in California called the Pyro. It was an ammunition ship. And I left there and came to Stillwater as a recruiter. Really? Yeah. I, uh, funny story. I played <clears> a game <throat> of pool against a guy in the Wormy Dog Saloon one night. And if I won, he joined the Navy. If he won, I bought him a beer. <laughs> Those are some heavy stakes. Right? <laughs> I won. He joined the Navy. He retired from the Navy as a chief. He lives in Philadelphia now. Really? We're, fr- we're still friends. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So I, I, I have to ask, uh, 
we we obviously like you said the elf in the room is you have a very famous son obviously right okay so i have to ask one question and it's not even really about him so the new video that came out nine ball yeah it's a very very powerful video it's one of my favorite music video i've, I've watched so how accurate is the video are, are you a very like avid like nine ball pool player it's the spirit of the video you got to focus on okay because just like the naysayers as soon as the video came out oh man it ain't even nine ball they're playing eight ball <laughs> they ain't gonna shoot right ping you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it is. It's they're obviously breaking an eight ball rack. Yeah. And there's yeah, of course. there wasn't Corona, you know, back yeah. in the eighties. You know, you didn't go to you had yellow bellies, you know, or yellow yeah. jackets, you know, back in the eighties. So no, not a nine ball player. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> it's a, it's you gotta look at the spirit of, of what yeah. the song represents. Yeah. It represents about half, if not more of the young men, and maybe some of the young women, but mainly the young men in America, you know? And I know there's naysayers out there that'll say, you know, who the hell, there's no way in hell, you know? But there's so many young men that were exposed to bars, my age. Yeah. It's a little different now, you know, the bars are able commission and stuff, you know, young, you know, young seven year olds and 10 year olds yeah. and 15 year olds really can't go in the bar. Yeah. But back then, Shoot, you'd be le you be you could be left out in the parking lot in a car. Yeah. I'm not saying I was always abandoned in the car or anything, but you could be. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that's what people need to understand in most songs, not just that song. It's the spirit of what it represents. Yeah, of course. You know. Um, so hope that answered your question. Yeah, that does more than answer my question. Th yeah. Thank you for fielding that. that yeah, it's, I love that song. Yes, uh, I, I do too. It's a really, really great song. So. So I got one more question for you, then we'll let you go. So what has been your favorite part of getting to do stuff like this? Like what's your favorite? Is it like meeting all the upcoming, you know, artists? Or is it watching them at their moments like playing the opera? What's been the favorite, your favorite moment from all of this? Seeing people thrive. And that stems everywhere from the privilege I get is going to the nosebleeds and grabbing people and taking them down to the floor. It's one of the things I get to do at shows, mm -hmm. you know? And seeing the San Barbers and the Wyatt Floreses and the JRs, you know, of our world, um, get to be in the spotlight. Um, and uh, they work their butts off for it. Mm -hmm. Anybody who thinks they don't, they can, they can keep complaining yeah. and keep playing the same bars they've been playing for 15 years. <laughs> so. You guys can do with it as you please, but I don't believe in silos. And what do I mean by that? You got a bunch of grain silos sitting in the field. Each one of them has a purpose. This silo has Milo in it. This silo has wheat in it. This silo has corn in it. You know, this silo has, you know, sorghum or whatever. You know, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. and what do we do? We mix it all together through a series of augers and mixing. And we load it into a feed truck and we go sell it to the farmer as mixed sweet feed or whatever. Yeah. So the mixed sweet feed is music. The silos are the genres, or not even the genres, they are these classes of music. So I'm not condemning anybody or talking bad about anything. I love red dirt music. I love Texas country music. I love the opera. I love classical music, okay? You know, Noah Kahn. Uh, Zach, Ozzy, you know, old rock bands that have half of the Old Testament in their songs, you know? Yeah. If you bottle yourself in or lock yourself into one silo, you've, you've limited yourself. And I, I see that. I, I see people who are associated with a certain type of music that if, if they were to go listen to Taylor Swift I went to a Taylor Swift concert to make me a Swifty <laughs> most people haven't been twice yeah. kind of like climbing a mountain you know <laughs> so and Taylor Swift concerts are expensive so but it was one of the most beautifully choreographed 
and she worked her ass off for three hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not a fan of, of the, you know, actually I don't really care about the exposure during different football games and stuff. What I do look at and what I do respect is the day before the Super Bowl, she was in Japan playing the show. Yeah. Went to the Super Bowl. She's playing, uh, just finished actually, a show in Melbourne, Australia, just, just now, like while we're talking. So I'm sitting here tired. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. You fly over the international date line, you're jacked up for a couple of days. <laughs> So she was in Japan the day before the Super Bowl. You know, flew to Vegas, did the Vegas thing, partied all night after the Super Bowl because the Chiefs won, right? Yeah. I'm a Niners fan, by the way. No. But Sorry. the Chiefs won. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay? You'll be all right. <laughs> okay? They have five rings. Kansas City only has three. Anyway. Well, I'm a Cowboys fan, so I don't win here at so, all. So... <laughs> But literally went to Australia the next day. Yeah. Played a show, I think, last night and then again tonight. Hmm. You know, so that's work. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I do see is is artists, they get too wrapped up in being a political activist instead of a musician. You know, so you got to be careful. Um, so I respect music, the artists that put it out. Um, a... Uh, a female artist who recently won a Grammy makes beautiful music. That person's first album was written by, produced by, you know, and performed by them. Mm -hmm. You know, but less than 15 years later, you know, there's. 20 people involved in the writing, 20 more people involved in the production. Yeah. What is music? You know, people will get all, you know, screw pop country. I like Luke Bryan. I like Blake Shelton. You know, everybody loved Toby Keith. You know, I like Garth Brooks. Do I agree with their political views? Hell no. I don't agree with mine half the time. <laughs> okay? But... Um, that's the one thing I'll, I'll encourage you guys to kind of dig into because you have a platform to do it is, is look at the artists that are playing the stadiums and they haven't locked themselves into a silo and then look at some of the ones that you meet around here on a regular basis Oklahoma, Texas that will just beat the hell out of anybody who's not red dirt or mm -hmm. Texas country mm -hmm. or Nashville you know there's no disdain for Nashville but Nashville's a beautiful city there's a lot of talented artists there everybody runs there but it's kind of like Vegas it's the Las Vegas for music mm -hmm. okay I don't know about the hotels in Nashville I've been to a couple but they had coffee pots Las <laughs> Vegas the nicest rooms don't have coffee pots stupid <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do you look out your window most people in America right now don't look out the window and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. We just hold ourselves in and complain. Oh, there's a keyboard. I'll hide behind that and bitch. No. Look out your window and you'll see a Walgreens on the corner. And then you go there. It's so cool. They have extension cords, coffee pots, filters, and <laughs> coffee on a kiosk. Literally. Because so many people come there and do what? Buy coffee pots. Yeah. Because it's cheaper to buy a coffee pot for a four-day stay than it is to buy that crap in the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Take it or leave it. Yeah. What's right next to Walgreens? Liquor store. <laughs> Go to the liquor store and get some beer, some whiskey, whatever. Take it to your room. Or go pay 30 to 40 bucks per drink that are short pours. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about when I say short pour, right? Mm -hmm. They will measure that one-ounce shot to <laughs> perfect level. And they do, will not even burp at any. You go to half the bars in Oklahoma, you can tell the waiter or the waitress, you know, hey, give me some whiskey, some of those ice croutons, you know. 
<laughs> and they just count. Yeah. And you can tell some of them went to a small school because they count real slow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a good bartender. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, you got some of the bars that'll fire them for being generous with that whiskey. Well, that that $40 bottle of whiskey, because they got it from their distributor, by the time they poured that whole bottle of whiskey into cups for people, they made a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So, let the bartender, you know, do slow count, long pours. Yeah. Because your customer's <laughs> gonna keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, let's all start looking out the window. Visit a few seed gardens, you know. Get out of the silos. That's what I got for you. Beautifully put <laughs> run of... Yep. Uh, Answering a question I've ever heard on this podcast, and I don't think we'll ever get and get yeah. a better one. <laughs> that was, I mean, I mean, like that you was said, fantastic. you know, you got you got people saying this and that about you, whatever. But I mean, for what we can tell, you love the music, yeah. you love all of this, mm -hmm. and you tell it like it is, and that's what we love. So, yeah, and we can't thank you enough for for sitting down with us, yes. to give us a little bit of your time. So, yes. thanks. thanks. Yeah, so we hope to catch up with you sometime down the road. And uh, like I said, it's been awesome. We can't thank you yes. enough, really. Well, you guys come up to Copan April sixth. We're going to have an all-women's event. Yeah, okay. And you never know who the guests might be. Cool. So. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.